All right, so let's talk uh, about the other objects that aren't planets in our solar system. So we've got dwarf planets, moons, and other things. Okay, so interplanetary, interplanetary bodies range in composition from ice to rock and metallic, which means metal or metal type objects. If you remember your chemistry, uh, metallic is kind of that middle section of the periodic table. So the exact name an object has depends on uh, not only what it's made of, its composition, but also its orbit or where it's found in the solar system. Okay, so icy objects with trans-Neptunian, so post or farther from Neptune, all right, uh, so orbits that are beyond Neptune are Kuiper or Kuiper, 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 belt objects. Uh, while icy objects that plunge through the inner solar system are called comets, all right? So icy objects are comets. Um, if they are beyond Neptune, then they are now called Kuiper belt objects. Okay, even though they're both made the same thing, ice, uh, depending on where they are, they're called different things. Uh, rocky and metallic objects, all right, are called asteroids in general. Um, but more specifically, um, they're called near-Earth objects, or NEOs, or main belt asteroids, MBAs, okay? Um, and that's if they're in the asteroid belt, they're uh, main belt asteroids. But if they're floating close-ish to Earth, then they're near-Earth objects, or NEOs, okay? Again, uh, asteroids, rocky and metallic, comets, icy. All right, so asteroids are rocky and metallic and contain little volatile, which would be easily evaporated material, ice, air, water, right? Um, so asteroids are too small to be seen without a telescope. So you're not just gonna see them out in the night sky when you're looking at the stars, right? Uh, they're gonna be dark, right? They don't produce their own light anyway. Uh, and they weren't even discovered until uh, the beginning of the 19th century. So we haven't, known about asteroids in relatively all that long. I mean, a couple hundred years uh, is not that long in the grand span of history, right? People have been looking at the stars and the planets for a lot longer than that, as we have learned in our ancient civilizations of astronomy. All right, so uh, if we're looking at the asteroid belt, which lies between Mars and Jupiter, uh, what was considered the largest of the asteroids was Ceres, um, but in 2006 it was renamed to a dwarf planet uh, because it's so much bigger and kind of different than the other asteroids that it's floating around. Uh, but it has a diameter of just less than a thousand kilometers. Okay, uh, now there are two other asteroids in there that are also pretty big, Pallas and Vesta. They have diameters of about 500 kilos and um, there are 15 more are larger than 250. But besides that, it's all smaller stuff. Now, again, kilometers is really big. So we're not talking about like tiny chunks of rock, like a baseball or anything like that. Like a thousand kilometers is still a, uh, a massive chunk of rock and metal. Okay. Um, yeah. So the asteroids all revolve around the sun in the same direction and lie near the plane and lie near the plane as the planets. In other words, you know how our solar system, we got the sun in the middle and the planets all revolve around, right? And it's more or less on this flat plane. There's a little bit of rockiness to it. But the asteroid belt is between Mars and Jupiter and is still on this same plane, right? Not a whole lot of tilt. It's not like perpendicular to where the other planets are going. All right. Um, most of these asteroids are on the asteroid belt called aptly, right? Again, it uh, is between Mars and Jupiter. And um, yeah, it takes 3.3 to six years uh, for the asteroids in this belt to rotate around the sun or orbit around the sun. Okay, now um, there are other asteroids in our solar system, uh, some of which are called the Jupiter Trojans. Um, and this is a group that share Jupiter's orbit. 
that means uh, you see Jupiter down here. This is Jupiter's orbit around the sun. Um, so when Jupiter is not passing through, there's still a lot of space on this orbit. So there's all these other little asteroids uh, that are taking the same amount of time to get around the sun as Jupiter. They're sitting at the same distance away from the sun and they're called Jupiter's Trojans. Now, they're called that because uh, they're named after the Greek mythology um, and figures from the Trojan War, thus the Trojan asteroids. Okay, so again, we know what asteroids are made of, right? They're rocky and metallic, very little volatile material. And although more than 75% of the known asteroids are in the belt, um, and they are not closely spaced, as sometimes depicted in science fiction movies, like when they're flying through the asteroid belt and, you know, in Star Wars when they're like, let's lose them in the asteroid belt. Uh, there's probably a lot more space between them than uh, there. You might not even see any or know that you're going through the belt because space is massive. Okay. Um, but the volume of the belt is actually really big. Uh, typical spacing between objects is down to a kilometer in size. Uh, or, sorry, typical spacing between objects down to a kilometer in size is several million kilometers. So again, spacing between them is several million kilometers. That's huge, right? Again, you wouldn't even see another asteroid. It's not like um, you're trying to break through the defensive line or something, okay, you're, um, you're traveling in space. Things are very spaced out. Um, Phobos and Deimos, uh, two small moons of Mars, are probably asteroids that have been captured and are now moons. Um, both are irregular. They're not spherical. They're somewhat elongated. Um, they have a lot of craters. It means they've been hit a lot from other space um stuff, probably other asteroids, right? Um, and they look a lot like other asteroids we've seen in the asteroid belt or other asteroids that have come close to Earth. Um, the largest one is about 26 kilometers, so that's real small, uh, especially when you compare it to like Ceres, which was over a thousand kilometers, right? Um, and 16 kilometers, also tiny. Um, so again, in order for some planets to get moons, like we think our moon was created right by a collision of two planets and then the stuff broke off and then it formed the moon and the earth. Right. But it could have just been that an asteroid came close and then it got caught in the orbit of gravity. Right. And then suddenly it becomes a satellite or a moon. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of moons in Jupiter and Saturn that are, probably similar, right? Probably other passing asteroids that have just become part of their system. Now we have uh, near-Earth asteroids, which are NEAs, and near-Earth objects, which are NEOs, um, and they're of interest for obvious reasons. If it's close to Earth, well, it could hit Earth and could end Earth, right? Uh, there's an old movie called Armageddon, right? Bruce Willis. Um, it's all about an asteroid coming towards Earth. What do we do when that happens? Well, we've got to figure that out, right? Um, so unstable orbits are when it's not caught in a continuous orbit, like the Earth is in a very stable orbit. Uh, it is growing slowly, um, but real slowly, right? Uh, but unstable orbits are on a time scale of a million, a hundred million years, excuse me, they will either impact one of the terrestrial planets or the sun, or they'll be like shot out into space. Uh, so their orbit is not going to last forever. Granted, 100 million years, very long time. I would say that's still pretty stable, but, you know, time is relative. Uh, most of them probably came from the asteroid belt, but some may be dead comets. Again, comets are big chunks of ice um, that usually fly into and out of our solar system because the ice chunks are way deep in the solar system. Uh, but if they're dead, that means that they are not moving on that same projection anymore. And they've been either caught or impacted or are now sitting as um, what we presume to be asteroids near us. 
uh, which would be the near earth objects because they're technically ice, right? Um, NASA's safeguard survey has found 90% of the uh, near earth asteroids that are larger than a kilometer. Uh, another one sounds so far on an earth collision course, which is great. If there were, hopefully we would have heard about it because you can't do anything. You just have to sit there and watch it come. But um, scientists are actually working on ways to hopefully uh, keep any uh, near earth objects or near earth, near, earth, near earth asteroids from colliding with earth as if we can find them soon enough, we can see that they're coming and hopefully we can do something. What can we do? I don't know, maybe drill a hole in them and shove a nuke down the hole and blow it around Earth. It's been done before, I suppose. All right, we'll continue in a bit.